you can move your fingers around a lot more, change your pressure points, get a lot more movement, and just throwing a natural two-seam basketball usually will get more safe. I'm also a big believer that every pitcher's fingers are different, and how you can put pressure on certain parts of the ball is different from one person to the next. But as they get older, those are good things for guys to try when they're throwing, throwing flat ground. But I don't want to get too complicated with that right now. Okay. So what I want to do is I really just want to walk through the delivery. After I walk through the delivery, then I'll show you a few pictures of pitchers, and you can kind of see where the body is in every different stage of the delivery. I'm a big believer, whether it's hitting or pitching, that no two deliveries are exactly the same. There is no prescription that everybody must do it the same way. I think a real big part of success for a pitcher is that his body is loose and fluid. The more stiff and uncomfortable he is, the harder time he's going to have repeating his delivery. The simpler it is, the fluid, more fluid it is, the easier he can repeat. Our end goal for every pitcher is to teach every kid to be able to get their hand out here to the release point, be on top of the ball, be out in front, and be able to let the ball go out here and finish over that front side. If we can get it to that point consistently, we're probably going to have a lot of success. So when a kid pitches for the first time, or you have young kids that are just kind of learning and they maybe only have a year in their belt, I actually do believe that it is easier to teach kids how to pitch for the first time by just having them go from basically the stretch position with a little bit of modification. A lot of kids that are learning how to be coordinated and learning how to pitch, just this boom, boom, right there can be very difficult. Okay? Just going one, two, kick is tough for a kid. But if we can put the kid in a nice, comfortable, somewhat athletic position to start and just tell them it's up, down, out, that's the simplest way to start every kid with pitching. All right? Coach McCurry talked about getting their hand out and getting the arms through the right way. One of the best phrases I've ever heard that goes back to the very first time I ever coached in the baseball camp was, when you break your hands, it's thumb to the thigh and then fingers to the sky. And that keeps them from pulling the ball out like this. They don't want the thumb to come out to the ear, thumb down the thigh. That gets the hands to break the right way. And then when they come up, their fingers go up from the sky. And that gets that arm coming out in the right direction. Like Coach McCrew said, a pitcher can have a nice long arm swing. It doesn't have to be real short like an infielder. So what I tell kids when we start pitching is just this. Take a deep breath. In the nose, out the mouth. Relaxes the body. Nice and athletic. Short feet about shoulder width apart. Come set with the elbows pointed down, the open side of the glove facing down, and just nice and relaxed. Everything from the waist up should be loose. If it's tight, we're going to have a hard time with the delivery. It should be loose, and then it's just kick, down, out. That's the first way to get kids to learn how to pitch. That kicking up and then down is also going to be very big as we go to the lineup. It's going to keep the weight on the back leg. I also think it's important to teach kids that when they bring their foot down, their hand should come down at the same time. Putting kids on the ground and just having them do this over and over and over again and teaching them to stay on that back leg and also to break their hand is real important. If they bring their hands down here when their foot comes down, now when they walk out to their home plate, if their hand moves at the same time, you get them up in that good, nice power position. If we're up on top of the ball here, when we get them going toward home plate, we'll stay up on top of the ball. But if we get them down here like this, which is what we don't want then, then when they go to throw, they're going to be under here and pushing the ball. So step one, I really think is teaching just to go from the stretch, up, down, and out, and then we get to the point where they have to throw the ball. All right, when they go from this position to the release point, we always tell them that the front side is acting like they're checking the time on their watch. If they have a watch on their wrist, their eyes should be coming up to that wrist. That gives them a good, strong front side. If the front side is up in this part of the delivery, now when they go to throw, their back half is going to replace where the front is. But if a kid breaks like this, and he goes and turns with the plate, he's probably going to just fly his front side open, and then come over here on the side of the ball, and we don't want that one on top of them. So as they go toward the catcher, it's check the time on the watch, and then they're going to take their chest, they're going to bring their chest out toward their glove, and when they do that, they're going to show the catcher their shoelaces. Chest to the glove, show the catcher their shoelaces, and that puts them in that good release point that we want, which I'll show you a couple pictures of in a minute, where they're out here on top of the ball and out in front. The more they're out here, and the more they're on top, the more that ball's going to go down in the strike zone where they want it, it's not going to run, it's not going to go all over the place, and they get right here for the release. Now this is the point of the delivery where I think a lot of young kids are taught the wrong thing. We're taught after they let go of the ball, they have to be a fielder. 
And we just leave it at that. We don't explain it any further. So what happens is they throw the ball and they stop like this. All right? And they're not using the best, strongest part of their body, which is their hips and their core. So I prefer to tell kids after they let go of the ball, that they basically want to take that back foot, they just want to boom, kick it up in the air, and then let it come down. If you tell a kid to bring his leg around and become a fielder, then what that pitcher probably does is something more like this. And they never get an explosion from their hips. We want that back hip and the hand as it comes toward the catcher to boom, fire at the same time. There's a lot of cool little things that you can do with kids to teach them how to do that. One of the best ones is to just put a chair to the right of them and tell them that after they let go of the ball, they have to kick their foot, boom, up, and have it land down on the chair, or just have it kick over the chair. Best picture to show them an example for that is Cole Hammonds. He has that big kick where he comes through. But if we just tell them to pop the hip, boom, kick the foot, that brings their hips through. And then they can say, we can tell them that when they start the delivery, their front hip faces the catcher, and when they finish, their back hip should be facing the catcher. Now we know they got the lower half of the way through. As far as their hand, after they let go of the ball, we're going to what we say finish the pitch. It doesn't mean anything to kids, no idea what that means. But if you tell them instead to buckle the seatbelt all the way in, they'll let the ball go, they'll buckle their seatbelt all the way, and we'll get the hand going good across the front side. So, from a very basic, fundamental delivery standpoint, from the stretch, set, up, down, out, chest to the glove, show them the shoelaces, buckle the seatbelt, kick the foot. Those kinds of commands to young kids, I think, are a lot better because they're actually, you're actually telling them specific things to do. Telling them follow through, stuff like that, they don't really know what that means. But if you tell them to buckle the seatbelt, they're going to get their hand through. If you tell them to kick their foot over the chair, they're going to know what that means. If you tell them to bring their chest to the glove and show the catch of their shoelaces on the back foot, they're going to know what that means. All right, so simple commands, basic principles. If we go to the lineup, it's really the same thing except for the first two steps of the delivery. We like to have our kids start with just their heels on the rubber. All right, some kids will want to start all the way up here and put their foot all the way up and bring it down. If they start with just their heels on the rubber, they're going to be in a nice position to minimize their movement and they'll stay more balanced. Now, on a lot of fields, there might be a hole dug out a little bit, okay? So if that's the case, as far as where they should stay on the rubber, I always tell them, just wherever it's most comfortable, wherever it's most level, wherever they can stay balanced the most. And if they take a small step back with their non throwing foot and a small pivot of their foot here, now we're right back where we started. Kick, down, and out. But it's all about minimal movement. I also like to tell kids that their chin is resting on a pole. And that chin stays on the pole right over the front side all the way until they bring their chest toward the catcher. All right, so there's not a lot of movement. We don't have kids stepping back here. We don't have them taking too big of a step. We don't have them rocking their head back. If their chin stays in the pole, their shoulders stay quiet, their upper body stays quiet, and a lot of that work can come from the lower half. Now, when they go to kick their leg, what I used to call the balance position, now I call it the load position, is I want them to feel that weight loading up on their back leg. A common mistake kids make is right here. When they kick, they kick with their foot, and they throw their shoulders back. All you're going to tell them to do is just kick with this part of their leg and let their foot dangle down. So then it just becomes more about taking the knee, kicking the knee to the glove, and keeping everything else nice and loose. If they think about just bringing that knee up to the glove, that'll get them nice and high, and it'll get them to stay on that back leg. Going over this right here, over and over and over again, I think is so important because it keeps kids a lot more so on that back leg. So just a few visuals to kind of make a little more sense of all that. All right, this one, the guy does have his foot up in the air a little bit, but we are looking for pitchers to be able to get nice and tall. All right, if they're tall here and they can stay tall on that back leg for a little bit longer, it'll give them a lot of time for their arm to catch up. So we're looking for that. We don't want a kid bending down here, and we also want to avoid this classic one right here, where they look more like a flamingo, and they have their foot back in here. Somewhere out here at about 90 degrees is where we should really teach them to be in that balance slash float position. All right, that's a real good one with Cole Hamels. I'm a huge fan of lines 
All right, and I think kids need lines to know where their body is supposed to go. This is a line that just shows you how Cole Hamill stays on that back leg with his chin on that pole over his chest. But another really important line is a line that goes from the middle of the rubber right down to home plate. If you can draw that line down the rubber and tell them that their body needs to go on that line and out toward the catcher, that will keep them in the right direction from falling off to one side or another. Coach Klausman does his drills. He might have a drill that just shows you how to keep them on the line. One of the things we do is call it a quarterback drill, where we'll put the kids on the line somewhere and have them just go back like they're a quarterback plant, go back forward, and then throw. And their whole objective is they stay on that line the whole time so their body's not falling off to one side or another. <coughs> All right, this is just something that gets me excited because I just think it's so awesome to look at it over and over again. I mean, that's Nolan Ryan, but the whole course of purpose of showing you this is because you're seeing how much he uses his lower half, all right, and obviously one of the most prolific pitchers in history. But that's what we want to teach kids is that when they kick that leg up, that they are really feeling that weight get on that back leg. You know, when they hit, when they get back on that back half, when they hit, when they pitch, it's the same thing. Get up on that back half and feel that weight on the back half. But at the same time, his head and shoulders stay very compact and stay over his front side beautifully. All right, and there it is from the other angle. That's what I talked about before. This is where mechanics can flourish or foil. It's the ability for a kid to get from the balance position to the power position and stay on the back leg for longer and not fall off to the side. So that's just another visual that you see right there where as his foot is coming down, his hand is coming out, just like we talked about, down and out, down and out at the same time, and then it gets the body all connected. I actually never even thought about that until I think I was in college and I realized how much easier it is for your arm to catch up if your hand comes out of the glove just a little bit earlier. And there's Greg Max with the arm swing, as you can see. The arm coming up, his thumb is down, and he's bringing his arm up toward the power position. And same thing here with the younger player. Same idea, a little bit of bend in the elbow, up toward his ear, his eyes going forward, and his shoulders fairly even. We actually have a pitcher right now who is, he's our best pitcher, um, and he's having a little bit of a hard time with his shoulders. He's getting really far back here, and it's starting to lead to him not getting as consistent of a release point. But if we can keep his shoulders a lot more even, and his face and his chest going toward the catcher, now it becomes a lot easier for him to get out here more consistent. And I'll show you that release point in a second. Okay, there's the arms for me again, up to that power position. Again, here's a lot of lines, because I like lines. Chin over the chest. Eyes in the prize, front side staying close to his body, arm up, body getting forward over that front side. There's the arm slot that we want to get to. When we come down, we're up here on top of the ball. We're pretty close to 90 degrees, so that arm slot up here puts us up on top of the ball, and it gives us a chance to get to a release point that looks like that. All right, out in front, head toward the plate, glove to the front side. There's a lefty, same thing, out in front, and then we get to the finish. All right, and that's where we're going to take that back hip, we're going to pop the hip, we're going to kick the foot, and we're going to get nice and compact. If we can get a pitcher finishing nice and compact in the same spot over the front side, that kid's going to be able to repeat a lot of strikes because he's getting all the way through on every pitch, and his body's going down that imaginary line to the ground plate. There's a younger kid, same concept. You see him coming over the front side, his hand coming over the front knee. Awesome rec specs too, which is always very cool. All right, same thing here, good balance finish. You see the rotation of the hips. Get done, that back hip is on its way toward the catcher, and the eyes are going toward home plate. Cole Hamels, classic finish. Kicks his leg up real nice, hips replaced. Eyes are still on that target. All right, right toward home plate. Just like Coach McCurry says, trying to keep a quiet head. All right, most little kids look like that, they're a little more stiff. But again, I like that he's getting over his front side. I like that he's kicking that foot up nice and high. And he's getting a good explosive finish. Same thing here. This kid's hand is all the way down over his knee. All right, that indicates that after he let go of the ball, he didn't just stop his body. He let his body finish all the way through. You shoot the bow and arrow, pull the bow back, let the arrow go. When the arrow flies, the bow follows the arrow. When we let the ball go, we let our body and our hand follow that baseball all the way over the front side. Long and strong. All right, this is some of the stuff I just said too, just commands are really important. Finish your pitch, buckle the seatbelt, 
You know, don't tell kids to swing their leg around, just tell them to kick their foot up and they'll pop that hip real good. Um, I always like to say that you know, we want to tell pitchers to throw through the catcher, not to the catcher. Uh, that just tells them they're always letting that ball go, they'll put a little something on it. If they throw it to the catcher, they're just trying to be perfect, trying to place it. If they're through the catcher, they're letting the ball go. They're letting the ball fly out of the hand without a problem. Um, throwing the ball to the catcher's body as opposed to the mid is big. And then after they finish, get that hand out. Rip the catcher's mask off. Get extended. Get out of the front side and get that hand going down right through the catcher's body. All right, these two deliveries, this is a little bit more advanced. We start talking about kids throwing different kinds of pitches. We want to make sure that their body and their arm slot stays basically the same. We want our mechanics to look the same no matter which pitch we throw. It's probably a little bit more advanced for most guys at the younger level. And I just love this slow motion delivery of Jared Weaver. I've been showing this for years, even though like it's a little outdated right now. But mechanics are mechanics, and baseball is baseball, and sometimes it's just really simple. But you see how his hand comes down when his foot comes down. He walks through the plate, brings his hand up. It's his chest out over the front side, and his release for a huge six foot seven guy, or whatever he is, his hand comes all the way over that front knee, even though he's a big tall guy, he's getting his body all the way through. All right, that's exactly the kind of stuff we're talking about. No two pitchers have the same delivery, but certain points that everybody's delivery are essential to the same to get the ball where we want it to go. When your kids get to, I guess, 11 and under for Cal Ripken, that's now when they have to start holding runners on. So that becomes the next thing we do is we try to complicate things a little bit more by teaching kids the difference between foot from the line up and the stretch. Um, when it comes to holding runners on, obviously most kids, when they try to do that, and the kids are starting to steal on their levels, kids are going to just pitch as they normally do. They're going to go up, down, and out. They're going to take forever to get the ball home place. So we want to teach kids to be a little quicker to the plate. So I don't like the concept of the slide step. I think it's a bad term. Technically, a slide step means you're just falling out toward the plate and not getting anything in the back leg. See Mitch Williams, 1993 World Series Game 6. What we want to make sure we do is we still get that weight behind our center line. If we can get the weight behind the center line, we'll also be quick. Now we don't lose any power, but we get the ball at home play quicker. And so I like to operate in what I call more of a knee knock. If you think about knocking the knees together and breaking the hands at the same time, we're loading up, but we're also starting a delivery and everything is happening much quicker, but we're not losing any velocity. So this is one of our guys, Danny Kerwin. Coach Klinger loves him so much. And this is what that quicker delivery will look like. Also, Danny takes his time to check the runner. He's working on holding runners on. And he gets that nice deuce going top to bottom. That's actually a very good pitch. But if you see how quick he is to the plate, there's no big leg kick. He loads up on the back half, separates the hands as he loads, and gets right over that front side. Same thing here from the side view, so you can see that he's quick to the plate, but he still has that weight on the back half before he goes forward. And he gets down over that front side and finishes real nice, right down the center of the mound, not going off the side. Nice and compact, and just repeating. All right, so just six really quick things that I think every pitcher should think about. Number one is throw strike one. All right, don't be nitpicky. Don't be nervous. Don't try to be perfect. Teach kids to just attack, attack, attack. Strike one, I just don't believe, is the most important pitch in baseball. The one one pitch is the second most important pitch. We want to tell our pitchers that their job is to get a hitter out in three pitches. If the at bat is ending in three pitches, that means they are throwing the ball to the back. They're not wasting pitches. They're not cranking up those pitch counts. They're trying to pitch the contact. They're trying to get guys to hit the ball. Trust the players behind them. Let them make the plays. So another concept that I learned from that Ken Ravisa guy is this concept of 10 seconds of focus. All right, I really like it a lot. All right, if I'm talking to you guys right now, I might tell you, all right, I know you're drifting, you've been sitting in the same place for a long time, just give me 10 seconds of focus starting right now. Pitching is so mental. We have to clear our head, take a deep breath, and every pitch that we throw is the only pitch we throw. Boom, 10 seconds are over, okay? When a pitcher is throwing, we want to tell them, just focus on one pitch at a time. They get up there, they take that catcher, they see, his, they see him set up, they say, all right, 10 seconds of focus. <sighs> set, boom, there's my 10 seconds. I get the ball back, clear it out a little bit, get right back on the rubber, <sighs> 10 seconds of focus. Even at a very young age, you can tell kids to focus on something for 10 seconds. They probably can't focus on one thing for any more than 10 seconds, but 10 seconds is perfect. Okay? It's just one pitch at a time, and it really simplifies things. Um, 
We're gonna, we're gonna walk, tell them we're gonna walk kids. We're gonna, we're gonna walk guy here and there. And somebody behind you is gonna make an error. That's part of the game. It's just the way baseball is. But if we can focus on getting the out after that happens, then we prevent a team from getting that big crooked number that Coach McCreary was talking about. If we make an error, if we make an error, it's no problem. Tell the pitcher, look, that's the same as you walking the guy. You're gonna walk somebody, he's gonna make an error. Don't get, don't get mad at him, don't get angry. Just get up there and say, okay, let's get the next guy. One bat, one bat at a time, one out at a time. We also like to teach our pitchers to work quickly. A lot of kids like to get the ball back after they throw the pitch. They like to walk halfway to home plate for some reason, catch the ball, and then walk all the way back up to the mound. Every single time they pitch it to do, they're going to probably walk six miles before the game is over. But if we can teach kids to actually just stay on the mound, catch the ball from the catcher, and then go right back up to the rubber with no waste of time, now we get into a nice rhythm. Now the defense is more toes, the game goes faster. My God, the parents love it because the game goes way faster. But also, the pitcher stays in this rhythm. The hitter can't get too comfortable. We just keep the game moving. Um, and also, tell them to own it and love it. It's the best position in all sports. Yes, everybody is watching them. Yes, nothing happens to them at all, but that's awesome. All right, they're the center of everything. It's the best position there is. Have fun with it. Smile, breathe, relax, and love it. It's all the mental stuff, guys, to make kids really be excited and confident to be out there. Okay, just a few quick commercials before we wrap up here and go down to the gym. Um, that's my email address. I'm going to post this presentation, the whole thing from tonight, at northpenbaseball.org. I'll get it up there probably uh, either tomorrow or at the latest over the weekend so that it's on there for everybody to take a look at it, send it to people, whatever you want to do. Um, we're going to have registration coming up soon for our summer camp. We have usually 200 kids at our camp. It's been an awesome experience the last several years. And that's going to be June 18th and 22nd from 9 to noon. Registration uh, site will be up and running very soon when it is. We'll post all that information also on our website. Everything is housed there. And also on uh, May 18th, which seems like an eternity from now, but it comes up quick. That's our community night at the ballpark. We'll be at the Hostel Field this year. We'll do a Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Um, we'll have it's like our last regular season game before the, hopefully the first playoffs start. It's a little tune up. But we like to have all the little kids come out take the field for the National Anthem, try to get a real big crowd there. It's always a good event. Um, and then we'll uh, head to the playoffs after that. So that, plus our whole schedule, plus everything else, will all be at NorthPennBaseball.org. And um, we just want to have a great season. We want you guys to come out and watch as much as you can. And you let us know in any way possible how we can help you. Right? That's a lot of quick information. Does anybody have any questions about anything here, pitching, throwing, catching, throwing, anything like that?